Hey there, magic one. Welcome to your 2024 yearly tarot reading. I really can't believe that another year is almost upon us. Like, is it just me or are they going quicker and quicker? Now, before I jump in, I just want to really, I just want to express gratitude for you being here. If you're watching this video, whether it's your first time here or whether, you know, you've been with me for uh, some portion of my five year journey here on YouTube, I am super grateful. I do get to do my purpose work and it is because of you supporting me so every like share comment and subscribe has made it possible so thank you so much so what we're going to do in this reading is we will be drawing you a guiding energy from the major arcana which is your big theme for the year so we'll set the tone with that i will then be drawing you uh, two tarot cards for each one of the 12 months of the year and that's going to give us the high level energies that you can work with and we'll be looking at the possibilities potentials and predictions for each of the 12 months of the year if you are intrigued as to what your year ahead holds I am offering a, a limited amount of personal year ahead readings to tune in to your specific circumstances so that will help you navigate the maybe the plan changes the unexpected events and give you an idea uh, as to how that may play out for you now in that reading we'll be building you a tarot wheel with guiding energies much like we're going to do in this reading but we go a lot deeper this is actually my most thorough and deep reading that I do offer so after the tarot wheel we dive into your specific life areas we create a spread for uh, work career business one for money investment finance of course love and relationships and also one of your chosen areas as well and you get to ask questions about all of those areas and we really go deep for you so if you would like to uh, book one of those there is the first link down below that will take you across to my website where you can purchase one of those readings now uh, like I mentioned uh, they are limited because they do take a lot of time and energy so if you are interested in that please do jump in uh, sooner rather than later so I can get your reading out to you as soon as possible so I'm wishing you an amazing 2024 may it be positive productive prosperous and full of abundance and happiness for you I'm wishing you the very best with it of course sending you so much love and magic let's jump into your reading now Capricorn these are your cards for 2024 so we've got the tarot wheel here we will be starting in January and moving clockwise all the way through to December I have two cards for each one of the months and I'll be reading them as a pair to give you the guiding energies to work with now spoiler alert you have so many pentacles in this reading and I feel like this is your year of finding that stability finding that security within yourself but also within the situations in your life as well this is truly your year to move towards your best life and take a real quantum leap towards that and it's going to be you know happening in that sort of earthly reality with the pentacles energy coming through so no more manifesting this is about doing this is about making it happen i think that your your year you know by the end of it life's gonna look pretty different and it's going to look pretty good okay capricorn i'm going to draw you a major arcana card to see what is the big theme that you'll be working with for the year so i've got just the 22 big themes of the tarot here And Capricorn, you are working with the Hanged Man. Interesting. And it's interesting because you also have quite a few completion energies this year as well. And I really feel that maybe you're starting this year going, okay, look, what do I need to release or let go of in order to move ahead to my best life here? So with the Hanged Man, we, we can feel like we might be in a period of the in-between or in limbo or that maybe your hands are tied but this is the year that you definitely get that liber liberation and the next card on from the hanged man generally uh, well it is the death card number 13 which talks about releasing what isn't giving you the growth anymore you know what is not serving you 
what is not satisfying you, whether it's a work career, relationships, the place that you're in, your friendships. This is the year of really rising up like the phoenix, but <clears throat> it is going to take, you know, it's going to take some work and it's going to take some facing the fear and doing it anyway. It's going to, to really take some reevaluation. But like I said, by the end of the year, you are really, your life really can be transformed here, Capricorn. So the hanged man is your guiding energy. Let's draw you a keyword here. So I've got just the keywords, just the keywords here. And you might want to include this, this word and maybe the hanged man on your vision board as well as a declaration to what you're working with this year. So I've got compassion and yet you are being asked to have empathy and compassion for others as you go through this process of release. But I'm feeling most importantly, Capricorn, it's the self-love, it's the self-compassion and knowing that, you know, really moving towards that liberation is the ultimate act of self-care. So you can really realign your life. And I think there's going to be a lot of clarity that you get this year, you know, for really taking leaps and bounds towards your best life. So let's jump on in with the tarot wheel energies and you know I really feel that January sets the tone for the kind of year that you'll have and I really feel that you know in January you're making this declaration to yourself this is my year of happiness I want 10 of cups I want to step towards that and I really feel this starts off a chain reaction of re-evaluation and the action that we'll pursue in order to to bring this into reality so we have the page of swords ten of cups in january and i feel that you are ready to shift directions you are ready for this change and it's funny because i always say that the page of swords is like the precursor to the ace of swords and we have got that spoiler alert you know, twice within the first quarter of this year. So it's almost like you can feel change coming in January. And I think that you are making that powerful declaration. Well, this is my year of, you know, paving the way towards my 10 of cups, which as you know, is my best blessed life energy where, you know, we're stepping towards the life that we want with loved ones around us, rainbow of blessings, resource needs met, living where we really love as well. And, you know, yes, you can have that, but the gateway to that Capricorn is the hanged man, because I just feel there is a bit of an energy of, could be the stale or stagnant energy. Things have been a bit samesville for a while, all the way through to, you know, you're feeling strung up here and knowing that you actually need to face some hard decisions and this is your year, but you know, you can rest assured that the 10 of cups is a really great reward for going through that process. So February sees you in that reevaluation, six and seven of pentacles in your February. And you're really being asked to reevaluate where are you not getting the, you know, the, the rewards for the time, effort, and energy that you're putting into situations. Something's out of balance here and something's got to give. And I think that you are really ready to look that in the eye and go through that process of looking at where you have invested, where you are, you know, giving your very precious resources. Because remember, your time and energy is the most precious resource that you have. And, you know, you should be giving that out in places where you are getting an even and balancing return. OK, not necessarily at the same time, but that it pays it pays you back. But the hanged man would indicate that maybe you've been in situations where you've been giving your energy but not receiving and it's been depleting you over time and you're kind of at that point where something's got to give. So in February I see you re-evaluating where that energy is going and getting ready to, to make your first round of moves. And here we go in March with the Three of Swords and the Ace of Swords. Victory through navigating a potential severing of ties. Now the three of swords can be, you know, a feeling of cutting our losses or letting someone or something go, but it's a three for a reason because it's actually the number of creation, of recreation, of rebirth. It's the number of the empress and, you know, your next spoiler alert is that she shows up twice in your reading. 
and the three of pentacles so there's a big creation energy recreation rebirth energy with you but first of all you've got to clear the space but before we even get set to clearing the space we have to acknowledge that maybe there are stuck areas there are areas that aren't growing here and through acknowledging that we can have acceptance of the fact that we need to clear the path and I think that in March there is a release of a significant situation but you're being told that that is your victory and I think you'll feel clear on that by March and you'll get a powerful breakthrough or an epiphany or there might be a communication conversation or some evidence that comes to light that makes this a no-brainer and yes it might be a little bit painful and you're being you know encouraged to feel all the things Capricorn but not dwell on it and to keep moving and just come back to that hanged man energy I am clearing the path for the new energy and you know what you're doing this year April another ace of swords and the eight of pentacles I personally think that this is a breakthrough in your work career situation or money it feels like after this kind of period of reevaluation for the last few months or the last two months of taking action on that you're happy carving out your path again we've moved through the six and seven of pentacles to the eight of pentacles you know you're happy where you are things are falling back into place you're working hard and smart and you're reaping the rewards so there could be a big win in work career you might start a new work work contract if you're self-employed you might uh, launch a new offering you might win a new client or contract there's just some kind of breakthrough or clarity on the path that you are investing in and I think you're feeling proud and I think you're feeling content number eight is the energy of abundance it could be that this is a good month financially and things are flourishing for you and things are really you know ticking along really nicely in terms of your earthly actions work and money in April so in May we see your minor arcana here the queen of pentacles Capricorn and the empress this is power abundance energy this is health wealth vitality and all of the good things and it feels like you're super in your power in May Capricorn and something that you have been let's say focusing on investing in or trying to make happen is starting to grow and flourish so if you have been working towards you know like a business or if you've been working towards um, saving and financial goals or maybe even house and home goals with the Queen of Pentacles like buying a home or renting a better home or renovating everything is flourishing in a beautiful way with the Empress energy she's fantastic in terms of money now she also asked you to keep taking that beautiful earthy grounded Capricorn action but also release a little bit of the control and surrender to the magical and mysterious ways that the Empress brings things in for you brings things together because otherwise we can have expectation that things will go a certain way or look a certain way that can lead to disappointment uh, you know when it it doesn't quite match up with that so you're being asked to be flexible but something that you are creating is going really well here things are growing things are blooming and I think you're feeling like in your power and in your creative creative zone for those of you that might be trying to conceive a child or add to your family in some way this is absolutely spot-on energy for motherhood or birthing something into reality like if some of you did want to start an entrepreneurial journey or birth something else that you've been kind of simmering like a gestation period has been happening this is the time to bring it to the world okay June June is the tower with the high priestess now this is interesting because the tower can bring destabilization or upheaval it's not always a challenge aspect but it feels like there will be change and it could be unexpected as well with this energy the high priestess is a real all will be revealed energy and 
she won't tell us at this point exactly what this tower um you know aligns to because that would be you know a spiritual bypass there is some important lessons or learning in this tower but what i do actually see here in this particular version of the tower is a tower that is still still standing even though it is getting hit by lightning so there could be something that shakes an area of your life um an unforeseen circumstance here but your tower is still standing so it comes back to that point of whatever it is that you're building or whatever changes you're implementing this year just make sure the foundation is strong and that you've you know crossed your i's dotted your t's uh, read the fine print of contracts all of those kinds of things so that whatever it is that you're building is firm and stable rather than you know being a house of cards your intuition is going to be heightened this month do make sure that if you get a strong gut feeling or an intuition about somebody or something that you you believe it you follow it up you know and that you you see what you can um what is within your power to to mitigate here so yes there could be signs that you're getting or downloads or insights and you are being asked to trust them with this energy so it could almost be like a bit of a a foreshadowing or some some sort of psychic energy around you about potential destabilization so in your July, I think we're up to July, yes, we've got the King of Pentacles and the Nine of Swords. So this could link into what you were feeling the previous month, because this can be Nine of Swords, some level of worry, anxiety, overthinking around the Taurian themes. And the Taurian themes can be our commitments, contracts, stability, security, real estate, those kinds of themes. So there could be some worry about money or some worry you know about housing or some worry about our work contract but come back to what you were thinking the month before you know you might have been getting some insights into that so maybe there's a chance here for you to actually be a step ahead here that's what I'm getting the king of pentacles could stand for uh, an authority figure in your life whether it's your boss or the owner of the company that you work for or a you know a property manager or a bank manager or somebody that you is in control of signing off a certain process here you might be in a little bit of limbo here waiting for a decision or an outcome in some kind of process okay so again trust your intuition at this time and what you're feeling august the ten of wands and the four of pentacles so the Ten of Wands for me generally is a sigh of relief that comes through, you know, the release or ending of a stressful situation. So whatever you were navigating over the last couple of months, I feel is coming to some kind of completion here. But you're being asked to hold on with the Four of Pentacles. Hold on, hold tight. This is a time to be conservative with the use of resources, your money, your spending, and that way, I, you know, I feel that we can mitigate any kind of, you know, tower moments, that type of thing. So it could also be that you're working and pushing really hard this month towards some kind of outcome. And if you are, you know, you're being really told by your guides here to hold on, sit tight, keep going and don't give up. Sometimes with the Four of Pentacles, we need to own our worth, own our value and just make sure that we are acting from a place of confidence and in our power as well. So yeah, I just feel that the Ten of Wands is like the end of a hard cycle here. That you might be still feeling a bit of the weight of the situation this month. But that very soon, you know, you'll be able to rise up and to release again. Okay, September... We've got the Hanged Man again, but it's called Perspective in this deck, and it comes in with the Three of Pentacles. So I feel that you get a new point, viewpoint or new perspective on one of your sticking points this month, okay? And the Three of Pentacles for me is often the right people, the right resources coming in at the right time to help you get unstuck, to help you move forward. So it could even link back to what you were feeling this last month, like 
you know, this is all my responsibility. I'm so accountable when I feel like I need to self-protect. While this is you, you know, feeling like you're sharing the load with others, this is really good in terms of collaborations or your work team. Sometimes as well, the Three of Pentacles can be, you know, like a plan taking form in reality. It's the earthly realization of the Empress's dream. Now we had her back in May. So maybe something that you were dreaming or scheming or planning or trying to take action back in May is happening here. But you're being asked to see things from different perspectives, different viewpoints, and just make sure that you are navigating any sticking points, right? Where we might need to pivot, change, surrender, release in order to get that result that we want. Three of Pentacles can link to building real estate, work career, or you know group settings and group environments with people. So it could be in one of those themes that you're feeling this energy. I just saw 222 two, two on the countdown of the camera as I said that, which of course is around our partnerships, our relationships, and our connections. So remember, coming back to your keyword of compassion, you might be working in a team and or organization and you you know you all have different uh, perspectives and opinions. There might be a lot of chefs in your proverbial kitchen, but I think that you know you can go through that uh, storming and norming informing stage. It's the teamwork phases and actually get a really good outcome. Remember, the sum of parts is stronger than the individual, and I think that there is some great win if you can really collaborate positively and delegate in the month of September. October, Queen of Pentacles again, Capricorn. So your energy coming through with justice. Okay, something's coming into balance for you this month. And generally justice talks about needing to make a change, a shift or a decision in order to bring those scales back into balance. So there might be something in your life that is feeling out of balance, right? Maybe you are waiting for some kind of answer, verdict, or clarity from somebody. That is possible as well. This could also link to contracts or legal situations. If so, this feels like you have the upper hand here, that you're in your power, that maybe you are in the right here. So if you're going through that, it feels like you are the one that will, let's say, get the outcome, the verdict. Um, you know, you will get the reward here is what I'm feeling. So Queen of Pentacles, this could do with signing a new, you know, rental or, or mortgage contract. You know, this is really good in terms of um, finance as well, like payouts, workplace disputes, um, you know, all of these kinds of situations. And if you are navigating something like that, just make sure that you, you know, know your rights, that you look at all the fine print and that you really be mindful as well. Make sure you've done your homework. That's what I'm really trying to say. And be well planned and thorough and organized. Like I know you like that naturally anyway, Capricorn. But even be even more so like that this month. So there could be you know, a, a powerful justice call that you are making or that you are receiving. And it feels like it brings some kind of growth, some kind of reward or result your way. Which generally is the pentacles, right? It's generally monetary. November, King of Pentacles, again, like you've got two Queens of Pentacles, two King of Pentacles, and so many other Pentacles cards with the Ace of Wands. So the Ace is a new beginnings, it's new potential, growth, expansion, energy, and feeling lit up, maybe around a King of Pentacles. Like for some of you, this could be meeting a divine counterpart. The King of Pentacles to your Queen of Pentacles, gender and specific, of course, but you know what I mean. It's like the the other the other hole, the other hole for you. So that is possible for those of you that are seeking love. For others of you, this could be you know elevating to another level in your relationship. Alternatively, the King of Pentacles for me is contracts and commitments. So we might have an exciting new commitment here or contract. That feels good in the heart, right? It feels made for you. It could be something you've been trying to manifest or call in. Um, again, you know, your year is basically a year of earth themes, which you've heard me say is like resources, money, 
work career, property, real estate, investment. So something new or new energy coming into one of those areas for you. And it feels like if you do move ahead with that, whether it's love or this is business or money, it can really expand beautifully and positively and bring a lot of new growth into your life. And December, another king and the empress again. So you are finishing big, finishing huge here with these energies. Now, the, the empress here is health, wealth, vitality, abundance, growth and creation. So you could be receiving, you could be really receiving here this month. The king of swords, Aquarian energy, also asks you to see the big picture and be strategic. There might be a move that you can make here that is going to bring you the abundance and growth of the Empress. You might receive some clarity or a breakthrough. The Aquarian themes of the King of Swords often, you know, often it really brings us um, into our individuality or you're being asked to use your individual skills, gifts and talents in such a way that you know it will bring through a new creation so it might be birthing into the, the the reality a new creation here that can bring you incredible you know abundance it's a very fertile month for creation and if you apply the king of swords strategy there's something here that can really shift your life in a, in a really positive way for you because the king of swords is transformation through seeing the big picture using your skills and talents and if we do and we act in that natural zone of genius that's when we get the growth and that's when we get the positive outcomes and it could link back to whatever you were trying to create back in May is really starting to flourish and that you are continuing to make the pivots and moves that really bring in the health wealth abundance fit vitality in your life so Capricorn, they are your monthly energy. So it's really a year to, you know, to be willing to pivot, to be willing to navigate, you know, any endings or reevaluation energy. And if you do from that place, I just feel that by the end of the year, things are really abundant and really flourishing in your life. But we have a Ten of Swords, we have a Tower, we have a Justice. And you're being asked in those moments to navigate any releases or letting go, you know, with maturity and within your emotional intelligence power. Because if so, it just really feels that you are going to liberate and really rise like that phoenix. Use your compassion, your self-compassion, your empathy for others. That will really help you in the process. So I'm going to pull you a Divine Abundance Oracle card to close this out. Oh, awakening. Okay, it says, Oh my Lord, wake me from my life as a spiritual sheep. May I hear you through my own instincts and common sense. I feel there is an awakening to your power. I think there are a lot of clarities, breakthroughs and insights coming in this year that's going to lead you to take action on some of that reevaluation energy. Like I said, I feel that you start January out of the gates going, this is my year to make moves towards happiness. And even just by setting that you know, resolution and that declaration, the universe will start conspiring with you. So you're being asked to follow your intuition, to follow that insight that is coming through. And through that, you know, and your own good old Capricorn common sense, by December, it looks like you are reaping some pretty major rewards. So Capricorn, that is what I have for you for 2024. It looks like a really exciting year for you. I am wishing you the very best. May it be uh, productive, positive, and very prosperous for you. Uh, keep in mind, if you would like a personal uh, version of this reading, you can follow the first link down below to my website, uh, and you will find everything there uh, that you need to, to book one of those. And, you know, if this is where we part ways, thank you for coming across for this reading and don't forget to check back into it during the year as well to see how your year is unfolding and how you can uh, get a heads up on these energies and work with them so capricorn i'm sending you all the love and magic for your year ahead bye for now